Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. We're going to be making materials for our robotic arm character. Let's get started. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably watching the 20 to 30 minute cut down version, but we did a full live stream. You can watch if you join the Patreon or the YouTube, um, you get a hold of it. Uh, the full stream is about an hour and a half long. We go on a lot of uh, extra detail, deep dive into a lot of extra stuff. So it's worth your time. All right. So what we're going to do is we well, think about the tone of the film, right? So this is the bad guy in our movie, in a sense, right? These are the obstacles between our main character and the goal of escaping the trash compactor heap. If you don't know what I'm talking about, and you haven't seen the other episodes of this series yet, so you don't know what the short film is about, you can check it out. This is a series of videos. Uh, you can watch them all independently. It doesn't matter because they're just dealing with different topics. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to rendered view. I'm going to come over here to my render tab, make sure ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections are turned on. So I'll just brighten up my world for now. And I will create a sun lamp and I'll just kind of rotate it off to the side. I'll shift you to duplicate that sun lamp and then rotate it around the other way. I'm going to click the base and I'm going to click new and create a new material. And I'm going to split my view and let's get our shader editor up. Let's just start playing. I'm going to be experimental with this to get it right. I'm trying to think about tones first before I get too much in the weeds with everything. I also want to make sure I don't get too focused on one section. I need to keep looking at the thing as a whole. Let's go ahead and select all the components that I want to have this kind of a tone, and then we'll find maybe a, another tone and we'll a, a, assign it to other pieces. And then we could start refining the surfaces of those materials. All right, I'm going to grab a Musgrave. Texture. Musgrave is one of my favorite textures for grime and muck and rust and all that kind of stuff. It has a really nice pattern. Um, I'm going to grab a color ramp to give me a little bit more control over this Musgrave. I'll plug the height into the factor and I'll take the color and I'll plug it into just the emission for now so we can really see it clearly. Um, and I'm going to take this and the, the best way to get it is to turn down your dimension. I'm going to turn up your dimension and down. Now, what is it? Uh, detail goes up, dimension goes down. That's right. I want to mask away sections of this grime, right? So it's not just going to be uniform over all of it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a noise texture. I'll drop it here and let's have a look at this noise texture first. I'll duplicate my color ramp again here just so I can give myself some extra control. And I'll just crunch it down a bit and I'll bring the scale right down to something small, right? So you get these really large cloud surfaces. And I will crunch it down like this. So now we have these big splotches. And what I want to do is allow this Musgrave texture to show through wherever we've got, I think where we have dark regions is what I'll do. So to do that, um, I need to, if I should flip these, then I could just multiply out whatever I don't want. So if you think about what this thing looks like, it's actually, let's get an emission shader. If you're comfortable using Node Wrangler, it's much faster for previewing nodes and stuff, but I like to just stick with this showing these nodes directly so that everybody can get a sense of it. If you're brand new, you don't get lost with me using too many add-ons. Um, so this is what our noise looks like. We've got black, we've got white. And what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to cut out large sections, right? So think about this in terms of math. White is the number one, right? It's a value of one, one, and one in the red, green, and blue channels. Black is values of zero, zero, and zero in the red, green, and blue channels, right? So if you were to multiply zero and one, you get zero, right? So we'd get black. So wherever we multiply this with this, uh, wherever we have black, we'll get black as well here. So that's how those, those um, you know, combining different color groups work. So if I go for a mix RGB and I set it to multiply, I plug both of these in and turn the factor all the way up to one. And I can then plug my color in here and you're going to see we'll have these big sections sort of cut out of our, uh, of our grime material. Make those edges a bit harder maybe or even we could just soften the whole thing up. We'll take the scale down this one as well. All right, now we can use this in some cool ways. So let's grab all of these. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more room. Let's get rid of this emission and plug this back in. Now what we're going to do here is we will take this and let's plug it first into the roughness. Let's think about how rough we want this thing to be. So how much do we want it to reflect the environment? This could be helpful if we pull up a, if we turn off scene world, we can pull on a, one of the built-in HDRIs um, and that can give us something to reflect. Okay, so now that we've got this cool mask thing built, what we can do is drive this somehow. So if we, we can play with this roughness and figure out 
you know, how rough or shiny we want it to be. Um, but then what we can do is we can grab a color ramp, right? And the color ramp's got two values. It's got, you know, the value on this end and the value on this one. You can add more. You can keep hitting plus to add in more of these little guys, right? But just using two, right? We can say, all right, we want to move between these two values. And if you remember this thing, um, basically if we plug this in, so I got to explain this really well. It's going to translate this image that we've created and it's going to translate it within this range, right? Which right now it's not going to do anything because this range is exactly the same as what we've got. But what I could do is I could come here and say, all right, I actually want to set this to something like, you know, 0.4, let's say, in the vibrancy. Using the vibrancy under the HSV, which is hue, saturation, and vibrancy, it's a great little trick because if you look over here in the RGB, it's set RGB to all the 0.4. So it's kind of a way of controlling all those. Um, then I could take this one and let's say I bring it down off of one, but let's go to like point six or something. So it's just a little bit different. And now those values I can plug into this and it's going to be the same as if, you know, wherever it's dark, we've entered point four and wherever it's bright in this material, we've entered point six, right? So there's a subtle difference between those two. You can't really see it much, but if I plug this into the roughness, you're going to see that we get that subtle difference playing out in the pattern of the grime and you can see that little effect there you can also use this with some color so i could come up here duplicate my color ramp and then let's figure out what kind of color we want for this guy maybe 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 the black is actually kind of a cooler looking color than this brown uh, but i could set two different tones like that and plug the base color in from there and it's going to slightly discolor the base color where we've got that noise bring some saturation in on this and then move the hue around a little bit and just have a look. Uh, now we can also use this in the, the bump, right? So I can go over here and grab a bump node. We can plug in the same system. Um, we could even use this color ramp. Let's make a separate color ramp so we can have that extra control. Also, I'll create a bit more space here because we're getting a little cramped. And I'll plug this color into the height of the bump and normal into the normal. Now what's going on here, this is a bump node, which takes a height map. A height map is a black and white image like what we've created. And the black is really low and the white is really high. And it basically simulates um, what it would be like if this was actual geometry. So if the light hits it, you can see what's happening there is that that bump is making it look like we've got extra geometry more than we actually do. Uh, now let's see, we could take this distance down to point one. I find that works pretty well. Bring your distance down first. You'll get more subtlety. You can see how it really looks like the bump kind of fades off there. Um, and then we could take the strength down because we don't need it to be that intense, do we? I mean, maybe we do. Maybe that intense is good. Now we could make this a bit more of like a rusty color. We could also try and bring in more of it. Like maybe that's not quite enough. So let's come to our noise, which is our mask. We could turn that scale up. And that will give us even more of this stuff. It also looks like it's puffing out. Does it look like that to you? It looks like to me it's puffing out, which I don't know if that's the right thing. I think it should puff in. So I'm going to click invert on my bump and that will reverse the direction that things are going. Yeah, there we go. So that feels like that's traveling in. Now with this, I can crunch these down for the bump as well. I can get that extra bit of control so I can harden those edges if I want. Uh, mucky looking robot. I might take this. It feels a little too shiny to me. So I think I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it up. That's 0.5. And now this is 0.6. Take it up really far with those bits so that when we get into this sort of rusted section up here, it's like not, it's like really, really rough. I can drag this in a bit as well. That'll really make that bit look gross. And then let's take this and I can add in another pip here and I can drag it to this side over here and I can maybe brighten up this one, get that little sort of rusted section. All right, now we could try and make some scratches across the surface. That's probably a good idea. So we need something that's going to give us a really nice scratchy look. So let's grab a Veroni and let's have a look at that. Let's grab our emission shader again and just check out some different settings of the Veroni shader and see what we can find. Try a smooth F1. Oh, I know what I should be doing. I should be having three pips. This way you can get, let me, and I'll switch it to constant as well. So when you have three pips, you can actually start getting a line. 
So then maybe from there, I can use something like Manhattan. And I just need to find, there we go, this could work. It's cool. These could be scratches. I might bring this a bit tighter, break them up a lot. So I need to grab a noise and uh, mix RGB and set this to multiply and pop this into here and turn this up to one and grab a color ramp but actually not that one, let's create a new color ramp and then throw that down there and then we can use that to smash out sections and bring the scale up. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, so let's take, um, let's take another system like this and let's take another multiply. What I wanna do is grab all of these guys, move them up, Basically going to create the same system, right? But let's unplug that for a second. I'll plug these two in. So this is exactly the same right now, right? Both sides. But this one, what I want to do is just change it a little bit. And then I want to combine them together so that I, I, I don't need to multiply because I don't need to get rid of anything. I actually just want to add them together. So I want to add all the white bits. So I could take the first color and the second color and switch this to add. And this will just add the values. I'll clamp it so we don't get anything over one. Um, and then what I can do is come to this second group. See, nothing changed, right? Because it's just adding the same thing on top of each other. But I could change, um, well, I could grab a texture coordinate node for this bottom group and a mapping node. Plug to generate it in. That's the one that Blender always uses by default. So by plugging this in, we're not actually doing anything yet, but the mapping node requires the texture coordinate node to work. So that's why I'm putting this down every time because uh, I need to have both of those. So I can plug this into both here. And then what I could do is I can just move this system a little bit and it's going to make it change. I like right here, right? Where this is two scratches kind of crossing. So now we can take this huge scratch system that we've built, just box select all this stuff, bring it up here, and then I'll take our main node, bring it over here. And so what I want to do is I want to mix this in to this system uh, in a way that's going to contribute to the rust and everything. So what I need to do is kind of add it into the system that I'm already using, right? So these three are all pulling from this system right here. So I just need to take this group and combine it with this group to get that in the pipe and to get it to work, okay? Um, if I wanted to simplify things, I could do Control G and that will turn this into a group. And then if I hit Tab, I can exit that group and now it's its own little node. Okay, and I can call this Scratches. And what's cool is I can import this into other projects and reuse it. So I could have Scratches and other things, but there's no output. So I need to uh, come here to the group output inside and plug this into it. And now you can see I've got a color output that I can use. So now what I can do is take all these guys and this, and we can combine it with one more. So um, I might take, we're gonna grab a reroute node and I'll just plug all of these guys into the reroute node. This is just a bit of housekeeping. The reroute node, it's really uh, helpful for keeping things organized. So I can just plug all these guys in. And now I just have one little thing that I need to worry about plugging in. Now I can duplicate this, bring this one here, and I wanna add this one into it. So yeah, there we go, we've got little scratches now on our surface, they're probably a little too thin. So I might come into our scratches group and just bring these guys out a little bit more. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned a lot of cool tips and tricks for how to make really cool shaders, especially some of these destructive uh, dissolving rust shaders that we we're putting together. A lot of cool stuff in here today. Um, hope you learned a lot. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave me a comment as well in this video to let me know what kind of stuff you want to see in the future. And please consider subscribing to the channel or even becoming a member. You can join on YouTube or over on Patreon. You can support the work that I'm doing and help me keep making these tutorials. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later. Bye.